Thank you. Uh, please take your seats and join me in welcoming Sara to come talk to us about wipers in the wild. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming to my talk. Um, I'm Sahar. I am a threat intelligence uh, analyst at BAE Systems Applied Intelligence. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you about wipers, uh, which is a pretty big topic, hot topic these days. Um, and one of the things that uh, kind of drew me to looking at this is the, the increased use um, by um, kind of state actors, especially that we've seen um, for different purposes, um, but especially because they make such uh, kind of high impact, um, you know, destructive, uh, um, yeah, operations. So uh, let's get started. Um, uh, I'm just going to cover briefly um, high level kind of throughout the presentation. So the technical details uh, and kind of uh, in-depth analysis will be in the paper. Uh, but won't have time to cover. So uh, first I'll start off with just a look at the anatomy, uh, kind of what the function of a wiper is and what it does, um, and then go into kind of deeper um, analysis about the use over, over the last several years um, and kind of pull out some interesting, significant uh, insights. Um, and then I'll go through some case studies of um, kind of the different purposes uh, that demonstrate the different purposes of wipers, uh, which I've divided into three sections, um, one being espionage, one is sabotage and one is diversion. Uh, so again, there's more case studies in the paper, but uh, for time, uh, time constraints, I'll just keep it to a couple. Uh, and then I'll wrap up with some conclusions and kind of an outlook, but uh, really draw out some of the, the important, important points um, from, my, from my research. So ba very basically, anatomy of a wiper. Uh, you have a couple things. You um, you know have the have the payload and you have a delivery mechanism. So um, usually the payload will target kind of one or a subset of these three uh, areas. So files are pretty popular. Um, a lot of the time this can be based on kind of extension file extension or in particular folders. Um, the boot section is obviously uh, targeted as well. Um, so uh, kind of um, MBR and um, that, that can be corrupted. Um, and lastly, what you see sometimes is backups and shadow copies being targeted. Um, often uh, the files uh, will remain un intact unless you do go and delete the backups. Um, and propagation mechanism, um, that is just a separate note that I had um, because there's wipers and there's wiper worms. Um, so that can remote copy and self-execute um, across machines, so I um, won't be talking about uh, those in particular, but just to be aware that um, that is also part of uh, what makes up a wiper. Uh, so briefly, uh, I'm going to just go through a little bit of a history. Um, so wipers have been around for, for a while, several years. Um, last decade, you can see kind of um, different, different types of attacks. Um, so some things that you'll notice are um, that obviously the, the primary kind of purpose um, of wipers in, in uh, these operations has been for sabotage. Um, so again, the destructive kind of function um, is, also, is also the purpose. Um, but one of the things that I do want to make um, kind of a distinction between is that the functionality uh, which you know, reflects the anatomy of the wiper, a destructive payload, um, is not always the same as the intent. Um, so you'll see kind of in, in the last 10 years a handful of attacks. Um, it looks kind of evenly spread out, but really what you'll see is in the last three years kind of seven or eight um, incidents that have happened and, and definitely made kind of headlines, um, and not just for kind of sabotage purposes, but also um, a, new, uh, a new strategy that I'll talk about in, in detail, um, uh, talking about the Lazarus actor who uh, is using wipers for diversion. Um, So the first case study that I want to talk about is Flame, um, again, which we've already heard a little bit about uh, today, um, and it's kind of one of the older classic cyber espionage operations um, back from 2012. Um, so this was an interesting case where, um, you know, Flame was, a, a again, very complex uh, piece of malware um, and one of kind of the most sophisticated um, that we've seen uh, in a while, but um, we'll collect everything from keystrokes to audio files to documents to screenshots um, and really was, was definitely used as an espionage kind of tool. Um, and so one of the things I want to point out is that uh, 
this did have a wiper component. Um, it was one small part of, uh, you know, again, a, a complex uh, malware with multiple kind of modules and things. Um, and so what you'll see is that the purpose really um, is of this malware was long-term surveillance um, over short-term sabotage despite kind of the wiper aspect of it. Um, and so in this case, uh, which would be... Um, kind of most common for wipers being used in espionage uh, scenarios was uh, kind of uh, for cleanup and cover up of the operation. So the attackers were very thorough in terms of uh, cleaning up after uh, of their own infrastructure, their servers, um, kind of wiping existing log files, um, disabling logging. Uh, so there were quite a few, there were several components of this um, that uh, went back and methodically kind of um, uh, erased any uh, um, traces of their infection. Um, so uh, that's that's something that just uh, is is kind of wiper in context, but again, not for not necessarily for the destructive purposes of um, of targeting the victim, but maybe just to be um, careful and um, in their own operations. Um, so next, I'm going to talk about uh, sabotage, which again has the most examples, and so there's a lot of these um, that uh, kind of are are common. Um, you know, black energy. Uh, you know, uh, in, in the U Ukraine, um, kind of very uh, very common across over the years, and still very much continuing now. Um, but one of the interesting ones that is a bit older, but also has kind of ramifications now, is uh, Dark Soul. So. Um, so several institutions in uh, South Korea were, were targeted um, in this particular campaign. And what I'll get into is that, um, uh, you know, this had kind of a multiplicity of, of tools and kind of uh, aspects of operations. So um, in each of these, you'll see kind of DDoS attacks, which were, again, meant to overwhelm. Um, you'll see uh, the wipers used, which, again, were meant to destroy. And you'll even find um, a backdoor somewhere in there, which was meant to uh, steal information. Um, so that's quite, um, uh, you know, kind of uh, covering a lot of areas, and um, there were three separate wipers that were discovered uh, across across this campaign, um, and you know meant to overwrite the hard drive and um, uh, overwrite files, um, and so kind of the important point um, that I want to take from this is that Dark Soul was one kind of aspect of a much larger operation. So Operation Troy, which went over uh, kind of, you can see, uh, at least a couple of years, um, which was kind of an ongoing espionage campaign. Um, and this Operation Troy was coupled with uh, a, a military uh, campaign as well. So uh, again, the wipers play a very small part, but again, having pretty um, pretty high impact um, in in these operations. Um, but again, um, looking at it in context, it's part of a much uh, much larger operation. Um, so finally, uh, this I'm going to spend a little bit more time on um, because it's uh, a strategy that's kind of emerged uh, over the last couple of years and particularly with one actor. Um, and there's some kind of interesting things that come out of looking at, um, at this actor's operations. Uh, so diversion, where a wiper is being used uh, to kind of distract uh, from the, the I guess the main, what you'd call the main operation or kind of the intended um, intended operation. Uh, so I'll talk about uh, two examples uh, from the same actor, but uh, different, different case studies. Um, so Hermes was um, a ransomware that was found um, in a bank heist uh, uh, kind of conducted by the Lazarus actor uh, in Taiwan. Uh, so um, they, uh, the attackers, uh, transferred um, $14.1 million, uh, I believe, to uh, kind of accounts overseas um, as part of their, as part of the bank heist, and then released uh, this ransomware uh, immediately following. Um, so this was found uh, kind of on, on the bank's network with no, known Lazarus tools, uh, but then we found this ransomware. So this is kind of the first time. And um, if you know, if you're familiar or not familiar with the Lazarus actor, um, they've been operating for the last several years. But uh, in the last couple of years, there have been uh, several bank heists, um, which is kind of a new area of interest. Um, and uh, particularly in 2018, have been very active and uh, I think this is about the eighth. There's been about eight public heists so far. Um, and uh, so this is the first time that we see uh, a destructive component to their, to their operations. 
Um, so this is compiled uh, two days before the attack. Um, the dro dropper extracts the payload um, and uh, spreads the ransomware via network shares. Um, so there's a couple of things that uh, will come up um, mistakes that you see uh, from the attackers. So uh, the plain text is decrypted uh, in memory but not written to disk, so that was a coding mistake um, likely. And uh, another kind of thing that you can see on the screen, um, uh, so the, well, the ransomware writes and executes um, uh, a script that deletes, uh, deletes backups and then deletes itself. So again, um, one of the things that uh, Lazarus is concerned with is again um, kind of uh, uh, hiding its operations and covering its tracks uh, and complicating forensics, which I'll, which I'll get to uh, kind of later. Uh, but then you'll see there's also a text box that shows up, uh, which is, again, look, probably a mistake. Um, and so these, these kind of errors that you see from the attackers, again, compiling a couple days before, um, and the errors kind of suggest that uh, the malware might have been in testing uh, or development phases, um, but really kind of the, the main aim was uh, to just have a high impact and deploy it uh, as kind of a side component to their main uh, main attack, which was the bank heist. Uh, so again, impact of delivery was a lot more important than kind of getting these particular details right. Um, so just want to go through a bit of a comparison. So we talked about Dark Soul and we talked about Hermes. Um, so this is actually the work of the same actor. Um, and really, they are... Um, interested in kind of the destructive component, uh, but their you know their kind of purpose and, and aims have shifted a little bit, um, and similar techniques, but you know they've moved from doing you know kind of a um, MBR wipe style wiper to ransomware in this particular case, um, but and, and serving slightly different purposes. Um, but basically, the ransomware is being used in a new context. So um, again, in the Dark Soul attacks, you see. Uh, kind of overwhelming uh, with DDoSes and, and destructive capabilities with the wiper. Um, and, and you could say that was even an act of uh, subversion uh, to, again, kind of undermine the institutions and things. But again, uh, more destructive. This is much more of a distraction. The ransomware doesn't serve any other purpose, uh, really, than to hide uh, the, the bank heist and to make that more difficult to investigate. Um, So the next one I want to talk about is from another Lazarus case, um, a bank heist as well. Um, and this one was um, uh, Banco de Chile. And that was earlier this year in May. So some very nice people uploaded these pictures to Twitter um, in, in May when we, were, when we first found out about the heist. And basically what they're saying is, um, you know, their, their computers aren't working, they're, it's not, they're not booting, basically, and there was a couple different instances where employees of the bank uh, were, were kind of noticing this and posting about it. So the bank um, geotags their computers so we could figure out, you know, where it was. Uh, so we started uh, investigating. Um, so this one obviously isn't, you know, uh, Taiwan was, um, uh, Hermes was in October 2017. Uh, this was May 2018. So it wasn't the first time that we've seen uh, the destructive uh, wiper used by Lazarus, um, but it is the first time that we saw kind of this MBR related uh, related to kill disk um, uh, kind of wiper. So not ransomware this time. Um, so I'm not going to go through too much in detail about how MBR Killer works, but briefly, um, it's a secure NTFS wiper. It targets partitions. Um, it's uh, actually an installer doing the wiping as opposed to dropping a wiper. Um, so this was, again, this was uh, a little bit customized, but there are variants of it out there. Um, it's uh, again, protected by VM Protect. We this is pretty common um, tactic of Lazarus um, to that to help obfuscate kind of their tools and things. Um, so uh, we actually didn't find samples similar to this particular one, um, and uh, so we, they haven't been identified. But again, it's it's similar to other other variants. But this particular one looks like it's been customized, and a similar thing uh, was true about Hermes where uh, the attackers did customize it a little bit, but it's still, uh, variants of it did exist before. Um, so the idea is that, uh, a theory is that it might be a one-shot tool um, that, again, the, the attackers are kind of using to just serve this, this one purpose, um, but haven't really put that much investment into, uh, really. Um, there are some other interesting parts about this. So um, with MBR Killer, and this particular heist, and op even the way that Lazarus operates, uh, there's some unknowns. So uh, 
one of the interesting things about this is um, how uh, the malware kind of got to uh, all the machines on the network kind of simultaneously. Uh, so this attack took out uh, Banco de Chile's network for for several days and was pretty impactful. Um, but it wasn't you know it wasn't demonstrating any kind of worm-like propagation. Um, again, the theory could be um, that it's using kind of leveraging legitimate processes, uh, Windows processes, and if you have that level of um, kind of uh, domain admin credentials, then um, this is potentially how you, um, how you kind of execute Wiper and, and get that much access. Um, one more thing that I wanted to point out, uh, which again, I can't go into too much detail, but the comparison of MBR Killer to uh, the other Lazarus tools that we found on the network. So again, uh, in all the cases, we'll find multiple ones, and some of them are their custom kind of backdoors, and then other ones will be the wipers. Uh, so the, the backdoor that we found uh, in Banco de Chile was uh, something we call Catch-22. So this is a pretty, uh, pretty interesting piece of, uh, piece of kit, and... Um, I want to highlight the difference, which is that, that those kind of tools and previous backdoors that we've seen from them are a lot of investment and um, kind of uh, interest from the attackers, and they really uh, pay attention to getting those right. So, and the kind of access they have is uh, kind of Swift Alliance um, uh, platforms, web platforms, Alliance access, um, again, all in secure zones of the bank. Um, and that particular backdoor, Catch-22, can operate in client and server mode. Um, so again, these are... Uh, the, the kind of access that Lazarus has and the investment that it uh, puts into um, its actual uh, main kind of identifiable tools is very different than kind of the, the wipers and uh, distractions that it releases uh, to, to distract from, from the heist themselves. Um, so I just want to look uh, across the board at a few case studies. So again, uh, a few of these I talk about in my paper, a few of them, a couple of them I don't. Um, but what I do want to highlight is um, uh, kind of want to cry and not pet you, I would have been talked about uh, with other other people by other people as well, um, and how they're kind of turning points. So again, both kind of um, in this category, um, but. Uh, the difference is, you know, there's kind of the sheer number of victims. Um, if you look at the other kind of attacks, usually what you're going to have is um, very few victims, which is likely indicative of a targeted intrusion. Um, so in this case, it was kind of a mass abuse um, of an exploit. Uh, again, low cost, publicly available tools. Um, and so that's just one thing to note and something that could probably happen in the future as well. Um, and then the other thing is, again, this new kind of strategy diversion um, that's just attackers getting creative and, again, trying to make things uh, complicated for investigators. Um, and the change in kind of strategy where, um, again, Dark Soul and uh, the, the bank heists were, were done by the same actors and, um, you know, the strategy is destroying data and crippling systems, but really, um, you know, that part is a constant, but the techniques have differed and kind of the intention has changed. Um, but this pivot, uh, strategic pivot from espionage and sabotage, you know, several years ago, almost, you know, uh, five to 10 years ago, uh, to kind of diversion and financial gain um, and kind of this criminal element to it as well. Um, so the, the Lazarus wipers really kind of mark a shift uh, that we might see um, again in the future. Um, so I just want to wrap up with some conclusions. Um, firstly, again, wanting to kind of emphasize that separating function from purpose and tactics from strategy is really important. So again, the function of a wiper being destructive and uh, having the destructive payload, it targets uh, you know, different parts uh, of a computer or of a network, and um, that's different than the kind of intent behind it. So we've seen examples of attackers using wipers for different, different purposes. Um, and that will play into kind of, again, a larger strategy. Um, and uh, another thing I want to note is that, uh, you know, wipers, a lot of the time, as you've seen, aren't used in isolation. So whether it's the bank heist and being used as a distraction or uh, as part of flame um, to, to cover up tracks and just a very small component of, of kind of complex malware, um, there is definitely context uh, of it being used in, in larger operations, same with Dark Soul. Um, that was part of an espionage campaign, but the wiper itself was used, used for sabotage. Um, and even, uh, you know, wipers can be part of bigger payloads, so even in the same kind of malware, you can have those kind of components, which, again, um, you can look at uh, in the paper. I'm going to go in depth uh, on a case study there as well. Um, 
so covering tracks and complicating forensics, I've talked about this. Um, uh, what you can see with that is definitely the flame example, but also uh, with Lazarus, uh, you see the diversion kind of um, aspect coming into it, but they're very careful to wipe their logs and uh, traces of their presence on the network. Um, uh, so that one of the things that makes things uh, makes you know investigations of this actor complicated is their presence on the network for several months, um, and again much much more stealthy. But then uh, the cleanup is also very good and kind of comparable uh, comparable to Flame in that way. Um, so yeah, what I what I mentioned before about uh, low cost implementation and high yield impact. So this is particularly true for Lazarus. None of these wipers uh, in any of the cases were particularly sophisticated, uh, though the other other malware may have been. Um, but especially in the context of Lazarus and uh, you know the customized backdoors that it uses, um, that that kind of um, advanced kind of malware compared to these uh, low level wipers, uh, which again some of them may have been uh, bought off the shelf or just uh, again commercialized uh, tools that are available for purchase uh, or shared tools, and they just customized a variant. Um, so again, there it serves its purpose. Um, and so uh, putting any more investment into that isn't really necessary, um, and it's, it's highly effective. So another thing I want to note with, the, with Lazarus actors, but with others as well, um, and I think this was mentioned earlier in a, in a different talk, um, but uh, so NotPetya is a good example as well, and um, kind of hitting supply chain, and, uh, but especially with the wipers, um, the attackers are definitely playing with fire here. So uh, the aggressive kind of nature of these attacks, um, again, it's, it seems like it's escalating. Um, and there's multiple examples of, of the bank heist where we see this um, from, from Lazarus, but they, and, and WannaCry is a great example of that. And one of the reasons I didn't classify it um, as sabotage or, or another, uh, another kind of category is because it may well have been accidental. And so really not having control over uh, kind of what those tools do. Um, and again, it might not be a concern for them because they're after a particular objective here. Um, so, but the idea is that this can have much, much higher impact than um, is intended or obviously wanted by, by defenders or, or victims. Um, so something to note. And then finally, this is pretty common uh, that you'll hear this in threat intel and in the industry, and it, it stays true for uh, uh, kind of the wiper discussion, um, as with other uh, targeted intrusions or kind of cyber operations, um, wipers are often a manifestation of interstate conflict or kind of the geopolitical realities. Um, so the world is in a constant state of tension, so that never changes. Um, but the kind of uh, way that wipers are being used, uh, as with other uh, as with other attacks and operations, um, are uh, are really sometimes. Um, uh, kind of reflective of what's going on in the real world, uh, you know, between states especially. Um, so kind of the impact here, um, you know, in terms of uh, damage of infrastructure or impact on uh, economic processes or uh, kind of national security implications um, that we've seen in a lot of these, uh, a lot of these examples, um, it's kind of a all-rounder um, in terms of impact um, and significance. So uh, it's the threat that will definitely um, continue and uh, as states kind of adopt this into their toolkit and it's becoming more and more common, um, that's something to, to watch out for. Um, so thanks for listening, uh, I appreciate it. And uh, if you have any questions, we have a few minutes.